We conclude this introduction to engineering cultures by attending to practical questions of method. How might engineers be able to deal with politics? How might engineers work with people who hold perspectives differently than their own, different than their own? Are you able now to work with people who hold perspectives different than your own? The key skill you gain by participating in engineering cultures involves learning how to map engineering problems through people. In engineering, we learn how to solve narrowly defined technical problems. We learn how to draw boundaries around them, abstract them out, solve them in mathematical terms, and plug solutions back in. We call this the engineering method. But engineering problems never get solved by themselves. Engineering problems are always solved by people. Once you put people in relationship to one another, new dimensions get added. Every time a problem is solved, someone gains a little power. Someone loses a little power. Someone gains some new contacts. Somebody loses some contacts. Power relations shift and change constantly with each and every engineering decision. And on the job, engineering decisions must be made in association with other groups, other perspectives, other people. How can you be better prepared to deal effectively with people who hold perspectives or positions differently than your own? We call our method problem solving with people. It's a simple but effective extension of engineering problem solving. It focuses on strategies for identifying other perspectives in some context of decision making and then figuring out pathways through which you might actually accommodate yourself to those perspectives rather than convincing yourself you have to defeat them. Problem solving with people calls for three ba basic steps that you might consider using. First, identify each perspective that's around you and involved in the decisions you face. Remember that problems often mean different things in different perspectives. You might be facing different disciplinary perspectives, different career perspectives, different corporate perspectives, or different national perspectives. Remember that defining the problem clearly, the consummate traditional engineering act, may very well assert one perspective at the expense of others. For me to define the problem in a way that might be clear in my terms just might not be clear in your terms. Once we think about problem solving in relationship to people, we can begin to see that the very act of drawing a boundary around a problem has non-technical or political dimensions, depending on who controls the definition. Because, again, someone gains a little power and someone loses a little power. The core of mathematical problem solving by people, then, includes politics. To help you think through the features of each perspective you encounter, we offer the words location, knowledge, and desire. Location. Who is defining the problem? Where are they located? Or how are they positioned? Consider a debate between design engineers and manufacturing engineers. How do they get in their positions? Do you know anything about the history of these positions? And what led to the particular configuration of positions you have today on the job in your location? Where are the key boundaries among different types of groups? And where are the alliances? All these issues are crucial to consider while locating the perspectives you encounter on the job. Knowledge. What forms of knowledge do the representatives of each perspective have? How do they understand the problem at hand? From what sources did they gain their knowledge? By virtue of advancing our own perspectives, we are inclined to treat other perspectives as somehow fundamentally irrational. Yet, at the same time, we might be dealing with people who are highly trained, have degrees, and are thinking through issues very seriously. So what forms of knowledge do they have? What are their assumptions? How did this knowledge evolve? So thus far, we have located relevant people in positions and then attempted to figure out what sorts of knowledges are built into their perspectives. Desire. What do the proponents of each perspective want? What are their objectives? 
How do these desires develop? Where are they trying to go? Learn what you can about the history of the issue at hand. Who might have gained or lost ground in previous encounters? How does each perspective view itself at present in relationship to those it envisions as relevant to its future? Second, begin, move, second, begin moving from mapping perspectives to formulating resolutions by asking yourself, does a possible resolution fit? And whom does it fit? More than likely, resolutions that occur to you fit your perspective best. But think things through. Does it fit other perspectives as well? Take a look, for example, at perspective A. Does your resolution fit the location of those who represent perspective A? Does it fit their knowledge? Does it fit their desire? Now take a look at perspective B. Does a possible resolution fit their knowledge? Does it fit their, their, lo their location? Does it fit their desires? Completing this step requires considerable effort for it involves stepping outside of one's own world and attempting to see how one is positioned in other worlds. It means accepting the discipline of an outsider. Third, to the extent you find that disagreement exists or that the achievement of fit is insufficient, begin asking yourself, how might I adapt my perspective to take account of the other perspectives out there? Is there some way of accommodating myself to other perspectives rather than just demanding that the other simply recognize the inherent value and rationality of my own? Is there room for compromise among contrasting perspectives? Adopting the method of problem solving with people, or at least entertaining features of this approach, can have significant implications. For example, one may encounter some significant changes in the role engineering problem solving plays in one's life and work. Most importantly, Engineering science, which the United, engineering in the United States has valued so highly, at least since Sputnik, becomes one resource among many for engineers to use in problem solving. Engineering is no longer the absolute foundation of all engineering activity and all engineering problem solving. Rather, it becomes one crucially important resource that engineers need in problem solving, alongside other important resources that particularly involve engineers dealing with other people. Another implication of problem solving with people, this method, is a transformation in the engineering concept of trade-offs. A term that typically means trade-offs between alternative objectives or alternative constraints now means trade-offs between what might be good for one perspective versus what might be good for another. In other words, when one maps problems through people, the trade-off becomes, will this solution be good for them, for me, for others? Perhaps a particular decision was good for one, perspective A, now. Perhaps next time we might formulate a solution that's good for the other, perspective B. Or maybe we can formulate our solution in a way that works better for both. The existing concept of trade-offs presumes a single perspective balancing more than one benefit or more than one cost. But work increasingly involves resolving differences among distinct perspectives. The trade-offs are now among them. The final implication of learning and practicing in problem solving with people is that it might very well enhance your ability to participate in decisions, to become a leader, to become an active mobilizer of support for a particular perspective by helping it to take account of other perspectives. One often hears about the importance of engineers learning to communicate. What that usually means is improved ability in public speaking. Here, we focus on what is perhaps a more important prerequisite to leadership, listening. Good communication depends on listening to other people, hearing their perspectives, and thinking these through, and then acting in ways that respect their existence and takes them into account. In conclusion, as you move through your career in and around engineering, you may find yourself asking, can you deal with politics? Can you deal with the power dimensions of decision making? Can you take account of other perspectives while formulating your own? 
Are you willing to put your own perspective at risk in the context of other perspectives? I and Juan Lucena challenge you to try. Thanks very much. <laughs>